Welcome back to our channel class like community. So today is the lecture 9 that is which we'll be dealing with the shock waves. Here we will be learn the first thing which is the law of conservation of mass, energy and momentum. Next we will know the construction and working of ready shock tube. So let's begin with the laws of conservation of mass, energy and momentum. So first of all we should know what is conservation. So conservation means the maintenance of certain quantities unchanged during physical process. So whenever there is a physical process happening, we should maintain the quantities. That means we will make it unchanged during the physical process which will occur. This is basically mean what is this word conservation. So conservation laws apply to closed systems. Closed systems, uh, in the closed systems, this conservation laws get applied. Now, what is a closed system? A closed system is the one that does not exchange any matter with the outside and it's not acted on by outside force. So, what is a, a closed system? So, that means it will not get or will not exchange any things with outside things. That means it will not affect it by the outside processes or things and it will not uh, act by the outside force. So the conservation of mass, momentum and energy are the three fundamental uh, principles of classical physics. So we will dealing with conservation of mass, momentum and energy. So we'll revise one more time this particular three things which we learn. What, first of all, whenever you will know about the law of conservation of mass, energy, moment, term you should know what is conservation so conservation conservation means that a maintenance of the certain quantities during the physical process and the conservation laws applies to the closed system now what is a closed system a closed system is the one which does not act with any outside matter and or you can say is not acted on by outside force so three things that is conservation what is conservation where conservation laws get acted and what is closed system and last is the three fundamental principle that is conservation of mass momentum and energy so let's move on so first is a law of conservation of mass so it states that the total mass of any isolated system isolated system is where there will be no change remains unchanged and is independent of any chemical and physical changes that could occur within the system that means any chemical or physical changes whatever it happens it it is not dependent on it that means it will not change and the total mass of the isolated system will remain unchanged or you can also state that the total mass of a system remains constant as mass can neither be created nor be destroyed so repeat with me that what is law of conservation of mass so if you don't remember this a big one Remember the point that the total mass of a system can never be changed. That means it remains constant because mass can neither be created nor be destroyed. Okay. Second is the law of conservation of momentum. So in a closed system. Now remember what is closed system recap that a closed system where there is no outside force will act on it right so in a closed system the total momentum remains constant so here the momentum remains constant in the first one the mass remain constant or you can state when two objects collide in an isolated system the total momentum of the objects before collision is equal to the total momentum of the objects after collision that means whenever a object A hits a object B, the momentum before the collision was 5, after the collision also it will be 5 only. So in the first one the mass was constant, in the second one momentum is constant. Now let's see the third one that is the law of conservation of energy. The total energy of a closed system remains constant and is independent of any changes occurring within the system. So in all the three laws, mass remains constant, energy remains constant, momentum remains constant. Last thing that means it they all are independent of any changes which is occurring. 
I hope you understood till this. Now let's move on to the construction and working of ready shock tube. So see what is ready shock tube the first thing which may come to your mind. So ready tube is a hand operated shock tube capable of producing shock waves by using human energy. With the help of the human energy what it does it produce a shock waves. Okay. It's uh, now we will see the construction. So it is a long cylindrical tube with two separate by a diaphragm. So see this is a long cylindrical tube you can see okay with two diaphragms okay it's one end is fitted with a piston so this is the piston and it is fitted with this side and the other end is closed and the other end there is nothing now the description ready tube consists of cylindrical stainless steel tube of about 30 mm diameter and length one meter so it has it consists of a cylindrical stainless steel so it is stainless steel which is of 30 meter in breadth and in length it is one meter okay it is divided into two sections each of 50 m that is it will be 50 cm okay not m because it is one m right so it is 50 cm please change it whenever you will do okay it is 50 cm so one half is 50 cm another half is 50 cm then only we will get 1 m right one is the driver tube and another other one is the driven tube so this is the driver section in which the piston is attached and the driven section is this one okay the sections are separated by a 0.1 mm thick aluminium paper diaphragm so this is the diaphragm which is of 0.1 mm thick by which these both two sections are separated okay a piston is fitted at the far end of the driver section that means this side there is a piston which is fitted at the very far end of the driver section okay a digital pressure gauge is mounted in the driver section next to the diaphragm so this is the digital pressure gauge which is in the driver uh, section and it is just next to the diaphragm okay so first of all what you need to know here what is ready shock tube it is a hand operated tube which produces shock waves with the use of the human energy it has two diaphragm it is separate it has it has two sections and it is separated by a diaphragm okay and it's a long cylindrical tube with a breadth of 30 mm and with a length of 1 m both the section is divided with 50 centimeter each one is a driver section other is the driven section a piston is attached far end at the driver section one digital pressure gauge is attached in the driver section which is too near to the diaphragm okay now let's move on now it says that it is the continuation of the description only okay so two piezoelectric sensor s1 and s2 are mounted 70 mm upwards towards the close end of the shock tube so which is the close end where there is no piston so this side so see this is the s1 and this is the s2 these are the pressure sensors which are 70 mm towards the close end of the closed tube a port is provided at the close end of the driven section for filling the test gas to the required pressure so in the test gas well so we need to fill the test gas so there is a port in the driven section okay the driver section is filled with a gas termed as the driver gas which is held at a relatively high pressure due to the compressing action of the piston in the driven section is termed as driven gas or test gas so why here the uh, pressure uh, why here there is a relatively high pressure because there is a piston which is doing the compressing action so here the gas is driver gas and here the gas name is test gas or you can say the driven gas now we will see the working 
the driver gas is compressed by pushing the piston hard into the driver tube until the diaphragm ruptures what happens this piston puts on pressure and compresses very hard until this diaphragm gets rupture okay now the driver gas rushes into the driven section and pushes the driven gas towards the far downstream end this generates moving shock wave that travels the length of the driven section so now what happens the piston pushed right so this diaphragm ruptures and this gas moves to the driven section and at the end it moves to the downstream end that is here and which will now generate the shock waves okay that travels the length of the driven section which will traverse now this whole area the shock wave instantaneously raises the temperature and pressure of the driven gas now what happens here the pressure and the temperature constant instantly gets increased as the shock wave instantly generates as uh, shock waves raises the temperature and the pressure in the driven section as these shock waves moves to this area the propagating primary shock wave is reflected from the downstream end so this is the downstream end so from here it will get reflected that means the propagating primary shock wave get reflected after the reflection the test gas undergoes compression which boosts its temperature and pressure to still higher values by the reflected shock waves after the reflection what happens here the temperature and the compression gets uh, undergoes it okay undergoes with uh, what happens here after the uh, reflection here the compression boosts the temperature and the pressure okay by the reflected shock waves which uh, with higher values of the temperature and the pressure now this state of high values of pressure and temperature is sustained at the lower end so here the higher values of the temperature is there at the lower end until an expansion wave reflected from the upper stream end so here until there is any expansion of wave in the upper stream end it will there that means the higher values of pressure and temperature will be constantly there at the downstream arrives there and neutralizes the compression partially expansion waves are created at the instant the diaphragm is ruptured and they travel in a direct opposite to that of the shock waves in which the shock waves will be moving they will move just the opposite okay now the period which the extreme temperature and pressure conditions at the downstream end is sustained is typically in the order of millisecond however the actual duration depends on the properties of the driver and the test gases and the dimension of the shock tube so whatever the temperature and the pressure was there in the downstream it was in a order of millisecond whereas the actual duration which will depend on the properties of the driver and the test gases as well as the dimension of the shock tube the pressure rise caused by the primary shock waves so the primary shock waves was here so here this pressure sensors that is s1 and s2 gets high pressure rise cause of the primary shock wave and also the reflected shock wave sense as signals by the s1 and s2 so here the reflected shock waves will sense that means the pressure sensor will sense here and they are recorded in a digital cathode ray oscilloscope so what uh, by which instrument it will measure by digital cathode ray oscilloscope okay since the experiment involved typically millisecond duration measurement the rise time of the oscilloscope should be a few microsecond so the rise of whatever the duration for the oscilloscope will be will be microsecond because the experiment which is being happening is of the millisecond duration measurement hence an oscilloscope with a bandwidth of 1 mm z or more is required so this is the requirement for a oscilloscope from the 
recording in the CRO, the shock arrival times are found out by the associated time base calculations using the data obtained. So obtained, Mach number, pressure and temperature can be calculated. So how we can calculate all this by obtaining or um, that means the time time based calculation can be obtained and the Mach number, pressure and temperature can be calculated whenever we get the recording in the CRO. So these are the basic construction and working of ready shock tube. So it's in a very much points. So I have done everything in points so you can refer the images and the points and you can learn and grow through it. The working also has been done like that. I hope all of you understood the lecture of today. Till then be happy and have a great day. I will see you in the next lecture. Wow, that's impressive. You have completed a magic today. For more videos, subscribe. Join our Facebook group and Instagram page for group discussion and live magazine videos for exam preparation in an hour. We start at class like community for students to learn from a friend in a simple way and support them in their own languages. If you are willing to be that one friend who saves us at the exam night preparation, then please join us by visiting classfly.n.